today is a big day because we are taking Arwen and Bling to their first show. They're going to do some Gambler's Choice obstacles. So let's get going. So here we go with trailer loading Blizz to start with. And I didn't really expect any issues because she loaded pretty good when we picked her up when we bought her. And plus she's a racehorse. They usually have lots of experience going on and off of trailers. So they're usually pretty good. Plus I find with slant load trailers, they're very open and inviting. So a lot of horses that don't tend to load, I find they do pretty well. So here's little Arwen. And he was really good. Now he was the third horse to go on the trailer. So there was other horses already on the trailer, which sometimes can help. So we kind of set it up for success that way. So here I wanted to show you guys a really cool trick for keeping it really safe for tying your horse in the trailer. So with slant loads, it can be a little bit tricky because um, you don't want to clip your horse up and then back up and do the divider because it's not really safe to open the butt bar of a horse before you've tied. So what I did there is I slipped the rope through the trailer tie area and I'm holding the rope, but it's a long rope, it's a 12 foot rope. Now I'm doing the butt bar. So now the horse is secured and in. So now I just lift the rope up over the top and then I actually tie it in the next stall on that tie ring. So then when I go to unload him, I can untie from this stall. Then I've got the rope and it's undone and I'm holding it. So I'm still guiding his nose towards the front of the trailer and then I can open the butt bar, but he's already untied, so it's, it's a lot safer. So here's a little look when we unloaded them off the trailer. Arwen was really chill, he didn't know what was going on and Blizz is having a little bit of a panic attack. And so this is one of the main differences between an off-the-track thoroughbred and a fresh slate. Bling doesn't know if she's going to race or if she's going to get sold. Um, so she's obviously a lot more anxious than uh, he is. And so I think that's just because of her past experiences. Normally when she goes places, she it's like time to run, it's time to go. Whereas Arwen was chill enough that he could hang out with my hubby while I started with our, our uh, bling first. And uh, so they had a 60 minute practice on the obstacles before the show. And here I'm gonna get started with the show. And uh, the 60 minute practice, I had two horses, so I kind of divided the time between both of them practicing things that they hadn't really seen or done before. So this is the start of the competition. So what I'm doing now is a mandatory way to start it, is you had to cross the start line and you have a piece of mail and you have to go around the whole outside of the arena. Now technically you can do this as fast as you want to, but because I am pregnant with a high risk um, pregnancy because I had a hemorrhage, I'm not allowed to run. So I'm still allowed to do things with my horses, I'm just not allowed to do anything too physically exerting. Um, so that's why I've got a lot of help and I've got my husband with me and I'm not allowed to run. So I am walking this portion, but I'm trying to hustle as much as I can. But even though we're at a competition and I want to do well for my horses, I still want my horses to be calm and thinking. So that's still my first priority. So this is gambler's choice. So you may notice there are pieces of paper on the obstacles and they have the number of points that the obstacles are worth. And basically... Uh, if you do the obstacle correctly, you get the points, and if you screw it up, then you don't get the points. So I love Gambler's Choice. It's like the perfect uh, opportunity for my horses to go to their first show because I get to choose the things that I think they're going to be successful at, and if I think it's going to potentially cause an issue, then I can do it in the practice instead. And so the way it works is you're allowed to do every obstacle a maximum of twice, but you can't do it twice in a row. You have to do something else in between. So that's why I did that obstacle with the pole and then I went back to this one here. And so my little tip if you're gonna do a gambler's choice is to do obstacles in like little circuits. So that was like a little circuit and as I did that barrel obstacle which was worth three points and then I did that fish pull obstacle which was worth five points. And so in this gambler's choice, the most points that something is worth is five. And there are only two obstacles worth five points. So the fish one was one of them. And then the next one we're gonna see in a second is a carousel. And then my other little tip is that when you're going between objects, like I usually pick out the obstacles that are worth the most points and I try to do them. And then these 
obstacles that I'm doing right now are just work one point, but it's usually a good idea to do them on your way to the bigger point obstacles. So this is the other five point obstacle. This is the carousel. And so this was one of the ones that we practiced during our 30 minutes of practice that we had. And here's the rope gate. So this is not one that I did during the practice because I didn't think it would be an issue. And lo and behold, it wasn't. And um, so then I'm coming back to the carousel. So I'm doing another little circuit. And my, um, my plan got a little bit messed up because the ball wasn't set for this one. So I'm definitely, I'm not upset or anything. It just when you see something like that, you kind of have to go on. And then I'm coming back over here and you can see somebody's putting the ball into the position for me where it should have been. Otherwise, my plan was to go through that rope gate and then go to the ball and go back through the rope gate and do that instead. So we're doing the ball and Bling had never seen a ball before today. So I was super happy about that. She'd never kicked a ball. So I was really happy that I was able to teach her to do that during the 30 minute practice that we had. Um, obviously all of the other confidence building stuff we do definitely helps. And there that was trying to toss the, um, hula hoop onto the cow, which I need to practice a lot more of because we have to do a lot of that stuff in extreme cowboy and I'm horrible at it. And I definitely missed, um, but I just did it because I wanted to do the ball again because the ball was worth four points, which is another really high point obstacle. Whereas the gate was worth two. And then these little walk over things here are just worth one. So I'm wanting to make sure that this stays a really calm and positive experience for my horse. That is definitely the biggest priority. And that little boat there, I think that was worth two points. It might've been worth slightly more. I can't remember now. And the bridges here, I think these were worth just one point each. But I like to do well for my horses and I like to have a strategy. I'm definitely a competitive person. So my my little tip is, you know, try to catch all the little obstacles on the way to the bigger ones. So it definitely makes a difference. So here I'm just catching a lot of the little obstacles that I can just walk through. Because Bling has a nice big walk and so I can get a lot of them pretty quickly. So she's just stepping through there nice and willingly. And this particular gambler's choice, there was no sideways and there was no backup for the in-hand class. So like there I had to make sure she put a foot in that um, box there to make sure she got the points for that one. So we didn't have any backup or any sideways. And I didn't do the pool noodles or the curtain just because I didn't get a chance to get there. But here's a little clip of after the competition. I just wanted to show that Bling actually does these ones really, really well. It just... Um, it didn't work out in terms of where I was heading. That five minutes goes by super duper fast, a lot faster than you think it does. So anyways, that's how she did. So little Arwin went um, further down in the lineup. So he super calm, uh, he's super chill. And I haven't really worked on trotting with him other than he's done some trotting towards me when I do some boomerang games. So here I am starting off on my walk around the arena. And for him, I'm like, okay, Arwen, like, come on, let's get going. But I haven't worked on him trotting beside me yet. So he's like, oh man, mom, I'm, I'm walking really fast. And I'm like, all right, buddy, like, come on. And he's like, oh, we gotta do another side of walking really fast. He's, uh, he doesn't seem to be a super energetic dude. So <laughs> I'm trying to balance. Like, I don't want to drag him around the arena, but I'm like, okay, come on, like faster. And then I have to give him little releases and I'm like, hey, come on, Arwen, like walk really fast. He's like, what's the hurry, mom? Why are we going so fast? He's like, I'm flying. I'm like, oh dear. So he, we started off nice and slow in a nice leisurely place but I'm really happy that he's not feeling anxious or worried he just thinks this is all fun in one big party so I start with the same strategy as what I did with that um, bling and I always go in even when even though there's no course that you have to follow for gambler's choice I always go in with a bit of a plan of where I'm headed otherwise I find you get forgetful of what the obstacles are and you get forgetful of what your options are. So, and because I have two horses, I often kind of start really similarly. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, that didn't really work. And I want to get to a different obstacle or something along the way. Then I might change my plan a little bit. And he's a little bit slower, so it changes things a little bit. And his strengths are slightly different than... 
uh, bling. So it's going to look a little bit different there. So there, that was his little bobble with the backup was just because the pole was right there. And so that was my fault. He was like, what? I'm going to hit it. So he kind of put his head up and I had to turn him. So here he is walking through the little pool. So you can see I, I changed my pattern. I did a little bit differently. So I left out that little turnaround one that I did with bling. And that's because he walks really darn slow. And that little turnaround thing is only worth one point. So I thought, well, it's not worth going, like doing that little loop for one point when it's going to take him a while because he just walks so slow. So instead, I tried to get the three points of the jumps, except for he knocked over one. And then those pools are each worth, I believe, two points. So that is helpful for that for sure. So then I get one extra little box along the way and then we're going to come and do the curtain so there were two options to do the curtain and so for this one I opted to just push it myself and that's just because he walks really slowly and so I thought it might go a little faster if I do it like this uh, but you'll see I do it again in a second and I get him to push it because I wanted him to have the experience of pushing it so it's just good to change things up a little bit so here I'm doing my little pattern the ball is set up correctly this time so it's ready for me so I can go through the rope gate and then do the ball and so same thing for Arwen he had never seen a ball before today so I did teach him to kick the ball while we were on our break so he did pretty good um, other than it got a little bit to the side and so we were told that the human or the horse can push it and basically I saw that my horse was willing to push the ball so I didn't want to like cause a kerfuffle Instead, I just pushed it because it has to hit the wall to get the points. So I'm like, okay, he kicked it. That's fine. I'll, I'll just push it the rest of the way. So here I'm doing the curtain. This time I'm getting him to push it. So he's doing pretty good. He's doing really good, actually, because uh, he had never, you know, he hasn't seen decorations and stuff like this before. So he's really doing quite fantastic. And then I'm doing that other box there. And through the pool and through the other pool. So I'm trying to get as many of these things as possible and I'm trying to hit the pools because they're worth more than the bridges, but um, he does do the bridges quite well. And my goal for this one is I wanted to get to that mounting block, which is also worth four points before the time went off. So, which I was just able to barely complete. So this was the last one. And Sending him on a circle is also a task that is still something that we're kind of working on. I haven't made it a priority, so clearly I got to work on that a little bit more. But he did super awesome. And, or sorry, I had that's right, I did a couple more bridges here, and then that was the end of our time. So I did very similar patterns, but slightly different. And then that was our time right there. And he did it super awesome. So here's a look at him doing the pool noodles and the curtain. So for him, I purposely left these out of my gambler's choice because although he does do them, he does them very slowly. And the last thing I want to do when I'm taking them to their first show is have any type of rush in there for like, I don't want to cause any nervousness or anxiousness. And if they need time or patience, then I want to make sure I do it. Now the curtain, because it was the in-hand class, which is considered like the more novice or green class they had them clipped up to the side to make it more open and inviting which I wanted to just show you here how he is when it's fully down and so he's good he's a little bit hesitant but he is willing to try but overall he did super duper awesome so I'm ha happy and proud to report that Bling got first place in the class and Arwen got fourth and it was a pretty good turnout I forget how many exactly were in the class, but I think there were seven. And then here's a little look at trailering up to go home. So Arwen's pretty careful. He likes to think about things. He's very well thought of with his uh, feet and bling. Uh, she's nervous more about the trailering, so I decided to put the shipping boots on her. Overall, I'm super proud of my ponies, so I hope you like this video. Subscribe and comment with what you want to see next.